Welcome to 123 Sync for ACT and Outlook Exchange. This section will deal with how to synchronize multiple users with calendars. There's quite a few challenges uh, do, dealing with multiple users. The easiest challenge is to sync one ACT user to uh, ACT contacts. Th these functions work the same way as dealing a single user. So if you want to know more about this, please go to part one that deals with single user uh, synchronization. But what we do uh, within 123 Sync, we can sync individual users to contacts uh, in uh, Exchange and uh, the calendars. So taken from there, one of the biggest challenges we have is when you have a, on a multi-user sync environment where you have uh, Tom, for example, on this uh, slide that will sync, uh, you have another, the same meeting being scheduled across three different platforms as well as with the same subject line and at the same time you have internal people in the company who are scheduling or adding that meeting to their list of meetings to attend. So what 123 Sync does, it actually manages the these interactions of the this particular meeting, which is urgent sales at eleven, and it manages these uh, requests and puts them all together into one meeting. And what happens when a users actually abstain themselves from the meetings and they do that by deleting the meeting from their calendar so how does 123sync deal with all that and how does that 123sync portray that into the different uh, activities in exchange so for each user in 123sync it has uh, individual settings of calendars and folders that exist in exchange we support multi-user scheduling for single and recurring events and we'll go through the demo when we, we show that and we have full support of the prevention of the generation of the body text the reason is if you have multiple users that are scheduled within the same calendaring events you don't want the generation of the body text because of security concerns so we prevent that from happening and of course uh, we have zero duplicates. From what we've seen, uh, we don't create duplicates uh, when we do these complex synchronizations. All the calendars are all synced from a single location, so you don't have to go all, to all different PCs to sync uh, calendars. So before you do any type of multi-user synchronization, you need to set up the users and allow them to synchronize and you do that by managing grant access to each user that's going to be involved in the, the multi-user what you want to do is allow any users that are going to be scheduled within their own database to have view and schedule capabilities on their access so you click on access click on view and schedule so when we log in we can actually set uh, the scheduling or modifications that other users put into any schedule that are created. By doing that, you you enable then multi-user scheduling and and synchronization within from ACT over to Exchange. If if you don't do that, one two three sync, we will encounter a permissions uh, uh, issue where we cannot modify items that should be modified, and uh, the sync will not work properly. get back to Outlook now and uh, see what we have. We have three folders. One is Tom1, Tom2, Tom3, which are folders that are dedicated to our three users. Each one has a calendar, Tom2 and Tom3. And, and the calendars, we're going to start with the empty calendars. So what we're going to try to do is map these calendar items over to our act setup. So let's just go to 123 sync, go to Tom2, then we'll select the Tom2 calendar, contacts first, and then the calendar. 
to check mark that. Then go to Tom 3. Click Contacts. Click Calendar. So now we have three users that have been set up with their respective Outlook calendar and contact folders. So now let's just exit uh, the one to three sync interface. We don't need that anymore. So now we just uh, go to one to three sync and basically double click on it and sync all all the data from the two calendars to everybody. One thing you should always look for is if you see any errors on the first sync from one to three sync and just check that out and then report the error or take appropriate actions to fix the error. So let's now see how this all works. Let's look at Outlook. We have the three contact folders, or the, th the three calendar folders, and I've cleared them all of any items. <coughs> While in Act, we have the same thing. So what I'm going to do is just create a, an activity and just uh, schedule with um, more contacts with all the schedule with all the users. A multi-user activity with Tom, Tom two, and Tom three. So I'll just go multi-user. Um, just call it four ones. And now it's scheduled. And what we could do is just run the one two three sync, and that will take activities and then put them on the correct folders. So let's close the window and see what we get on the act side. So we go to first calendar. We'll see Tom with everybody scheduled. And you can see, let me reduce to this. You can see at the bottom here that is actually linked to all the contacts that are the users in Act. So, and then we can just go down to calendar 2 for Tom 2. So we click here and you can see there that it's been scheduled and everything there. And the same thing for for user number 3. There we go. It's linked to the contacts and then we have it. So now what we want to do just on, on user number 2, let's just modify it and just say, okay, instead of number, number 1's, let's call it number 2's and we want to add details to the activity. So this is activity details details body text. Just go here. So what we've done now is modify the calendar item, the single calendar item in in Outlook and see how it syncs back into Act. And we also added the activity details. So we double click It runs. So now what's done is put it back into ACT. So if you run it again, now it's actually pro going to propagate to all the users that are part of the, act or the activity. So you would need two syncs in order for, for these uh, modifications uh, to go through to all the users. So now let's just go back to ACT and see what we get. We go F5. Oh, now we can see there's an icon for the details. So now the details have been put back into Act, the activity details, as well as the modification that we made on user 2. So, so let's go into Outlook. And um, because we're doing some things, let's just restart Outlook. On an Exchange server, this was a, wouldn't be pertinent, but uh, in um, when you're having Outlook as your main transport, yeah, you probably need to restart it. Uh, I would suggest restarting it after sync. So let's go to Calendar and Outlook. Just click on on the item. Here we have, and then now the the details is right there. So what we've done is propagate the details from one user to every, all the other users within the same appointment, as well as the modifications. 
so now we have three users that are being scheduled and these three users uh, have a calendar item that they have to to meet so we can actually see if we want to go okay if Tom 1 or let's just go to Tom 2 and Tom 2 doesn't want to be there he, he, he'll remove the calendar item so what this what you really want to do when when somebody like that removes it from his item you don't want to remove it from the other contact folders you want it to update the people that are actually active in the in the calendar so let's just sync and see what happens so let's go back into act and then just go f5 and then we go here now we can see that only we only have Tom and Tom 3 so the second the Tom 2 has been removed from the from the calendar item but the calendar item still exists in the, uh, as far as the meeting go so what we're doing is we're not removing the whole item or doing modification we're just removing that user from actually participating on the meeting uh, which is uh, if you have a cell phone you just remove your, your calendar you're not going to be there just remove it from your calendar and then that user gets taken off uh, the meeting itself so now let's go back to act uh, and in act uh, this is the meeting it's at 10 o'clock okay the meeting has been scheduled for 12 so we can just move to 12 and then sync and if we go into Outlook instead of being 10 if you go to the calendar it's going to be at 12 so what we've done now basically is any modifications in time or when the, the meeting is it actually reflects in Outlook so now within Outlook we could say well the meeting is not on Monday so the meeting actually has been moved from Monday to Wednesday at 11:30. So we do that. We go, and what we can see here is that on Tom 3, which is part of the meeting, the meeting is still at noon. So, so we just go into sync and uh, do the sync twice. So now it's syncing back to act. sync it again now that it's syncing from act over to outlook and making all the modifications that we need so you're looking at at least two syncs and then uh, we just go into tom 3 and see what happens and there it is so now you've modified on, on tom 1 and tom 3 is affected as well and of course the the meeting in act has been moved as well so this whole coordination of meetings um, is now being uh, managed by 123 sync. So, of course, um, if you're going to act and you go and erase the meeting and just say, okay, you want to delete this activity, say just delete this activity when you run the 123 sync, and the activity now is the, should be deleted from all the users that you're actually synchronizing. So, let's just have a look on that. Click on here and it looks at the calendar, there's nothing there, nothing here, nothing there. So so deleting from the act, which will be where all the pieces are together, it will delete from the multiple Outlook uh, folders in, in Outlook. So now let's look how we deal with recurring events of multiple users. Let's create a, a meeting, uh, a daily meeting with all the contacts. Select the contacts. Okay, all the users, and then just uh, put a recurrence of daily into infinity. Oh, I need to edit the subject recurring event for all. Okay, let's click here, edit all occurrences. So, what we have is a meeting that goes into infinity. So let's just go into 123 sync, double click on 123 sync, and it will run the sync for us. So what it's doing now, it's putting the recurring events into 
into the different uh, contacts. So we'll go here and just look at the uh, uh, different users. I mean, let's just close this. Uh, we'll go go to the calendar here. So everybody, Tom one through three, has the meeting. So now let's just go to Tom three and just delete a particular occurrence and see what. Let's just delete Tuesdays and Thursdays of this occurrence. And on recurring events, if you delete an individual uh, uh, instance, you delete it for everybody. So let's go and sync that. And what we're doing now is syncing the recurring recurrence exceptions from what is uh, from Outlook over to Act. So I'll click here, click F5, and now we have the recurring exceptions. By syncing again, now we we propagating the modifications to all the users. So we go into these my Tom one users, and now you have the recurring exceptions on Tom one as well as on Tom three. So now we have uh, in Act and Outlook we have a basic mechanism to synchronize individual meetings and activities. So in another piece that we support in Outlook is if you go into a particular meeting and then you you want to just uh, open it, open this occurrence, and you can just uh, say, oh, uh, changed and had and had fun. So what you're doing is creating an individual occurrence of this meeting. So if you click here, you know, open this occurrence change and had fun. So let's see how that maps into the synchronization. Let's just double click on the sync. And what we do, we actually bring it over to ACT, create the, the ACT equivalent of it, and then we take that and then propagate it to all the users. So click here, just let's do another one. And there we go, we're done. So now let's look at Outlook, and we can see in Outlook that the activity, now it's an individual activity for Outlook, and as well, let's just look at Tom 3, it's an individual activity, while we still have the series going on here, which uh, it, it matches exactly what's happening in ACT. So in ACT, this is an individual activity with the same subject, as well as this is the series of the recurrence activity series. So what we're doing, we not only we do deletions, but as well we do modifications and, and synchronize the modifications between the different users and ACT and the ACT recurring activity. So just to finalize, let's move to the next week and let's just take and uh, move the activity that is at from 10 o'clock, let's move that to 8 o'clock and let's move all the occurrences to 8 o'clock. So what we have now it's an 8 o'clock recurring activity that has uh, 10 o'clock in, 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 in Outlook. So what we want to do if we sync, these activities should move in Outlook. Basically it will match the recurring activity changes that we do in Act. So let's close that, let's go back into Outlook, and here we have 8 o'clock. So what we've seen is, is a full integration of recurring activity mechanisms between ACT and Outlook and Outlook and ACT. Or in this case, uh, and in all cases, it would be Outlook or Exchange. This concludes our presentation on how to synchronize a multi-user ACT database with a multi-user folders in Outlook or Exchange where you can actually synchronize singular or individual activities as well as recurring activities one way and two way. Thank you for taking your time to see, watch us and uh, please contact us if you have any questions.